pushing up to 7 o'clock, I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the Pledge of the Flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Welcome everyone to the June 20th meeting. We have approval of the minutes of June 6, 2018. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Financial report and payment of the bills. We have a motion to approve financial report. So moved. So moved. And a second. We got a second in there also. And any discussion on the financial report and payment of the bills? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, uh, Charlie, I'm going to put you on. This is the 2018 Mayor and Commissioner Scholarship Award presentation. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, we have two uh, students from Elkton High School who just graduated. I want to commend the guidance staff at Elkton High School for the selection of these two nominees, and they're both very good students. First is Zakara Banks. Zakara, would you come up here? And, and also, uh, Jeff, would you come up here? Come also, on. so she won't be so nervous <laughs> alone. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to ask you two to come up on top of the stage here today. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have you come up here on the stage with us. You want to tell us a little bit about? I have them, yes. All right. First, with Zakara. Zakara was the senior class president and had an opportunity, which was rare, for one of the students to address the graduating seniors. She completed certified medical assistant program through Cecil a Community School of Technology. She was a member of the track and field team and a member of the cross country team. Uh, she will be attending Salisbury University in the fall. And she plans to major in nursing. And with Jeff, Jeff is a member of our boys uh, varsity football team at Alton and captain of the lacrosse team. He will be attending Frostburg State University in the fall where he plans to uh, play lacrosse and major in wildlife management or he plans to major in physical education, which is not a bad choice because I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the two recipients and please receive them if you will. Listen, we need to get a photograph with these folks. Come on, right here, underneath the seal. This will be something we'll do here tonight. All right, we'll play a little musical chair, maybe a little bit. How's that look? Earl, you ready? Oh, I'm always ready. <laughs> Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Well deserved. Well deserved. I saw you. I know. Girl was adjusting my chair. It did work. Okay, next up we have. Uh, uh, Lee G and uh, Mr. Ryan uh, coming on down here and tell us a little bit about the Warner Road pump station sewer capacity analysis. Come on down and give us a, an update on everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My apologies. I'll survive. Thank you. Yeah, just move her. We'll take a look at this, and then we'll have him spin it around. Uh, so uh, we'll take it to the back of the room, so if anyone is interested to see what this is all about. Is that okay to have you? Yeah, this is fine. I, I know that there's some landowners here that uh, certainly have interest. All right, very good. Well, thank, thank you very much uh, for, for inviting us. Um, and uh, on a much less exciting topic than our impressive uh, youth that's going to mold our future, we're going to talk to you about the town's wastewater. <laughs> um, we, we submitted a support uh, report to the town 
a, a while back, and we were asked here today to summarize this report for you and focus mainly on our results and, and the recommendations. So our task at hand is to try to try to give you a, a, a very concise summary and try to shrink all this analysis down into about a 10 minute, 10 to 12 minute presentation. Most importantly, we want to open up Q&A afterwards because we are going to fly through this pretty quickly. Yep. Um, just in the interest of, of saving everyone's time. So you all have a copy of the report. We've highlighted certain sections for you. As we go through our, our presentation, um, we try to make it easy for you guys to follow if you, if you wanted to get a little bit more detail since, since we're going to be going through, through a lot of this quickly. Brian, maybe we should put it over in that corner. That's fine. Is that okay? I can, I, 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 I can, put, it, I can yeah. put it wherever we, you'd like. We actually have the map here in our book. And, and that, and yeah, I was going right to, and I was going to say that's very similar. That, that's and I think, and I think everyone wants to see this. Thank you. That way they can see if we have. Yep. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah. So that's that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. So what 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 they see on here is pretty much the same as, as the appendix A. That you have. Appendix A. So before we get to appendix A, let me just let me just highlight the, these tag sections for you. Um, number one is simply the introduction, which talks big picture about these drainage areas we're going to be talking about tonight. Okay. Number two talks about the details of the Warner Road drainage area, which is one of the three areas we're going to be talking about. Okay. <laughs> number three is Meadow drainage area, and number four is Patriots Glen drainage area. Gotcha. So a picture says a thousand words, so I'm going to be referring to the visual mainly. But again, if you want to get into any more details, feel free to ask a question. We have it right here, guys. Just fold that. We have it right here. Number five is an analysis on the shared forest theme. Um, and that is really the main part of the presentation, the main part of our report, and the main part of the infrastructure that we need to, to discuss with you. Um, number six is the all-important cost estimate and summary, which I'm going to focus on um, at, at the end of the presentation. Yep. And real quickly, the appendices, if you if you want to use them for reference, B summarizes all the flows that we're going to be talking about, existing flows and proposed flows going into this northeast part of town. Appendix C is a very helpful flow diagram schematic. Uh, which links all these flows together and shows you what's going on, what pump station, and how it's all getting to the shared force main. D, E, and F are proposed locations for the larger projects. So let me, if I can, let me just talk off this, this visual yep. I'm also looking at you. So basically, this northeast part of, of Elton, we have three primary drainage areas. We have the, this, the reddish color is the Warner Road drainage area. We have the Meadows drainage area, mm -hmm. and then the Patriots Glen drainage area. All three of these drainage areas are all expecting a significant amount of growth over the next few years. They're all currently ser serving sewer customers, but there there's substantial growth coming up in the near future. Each one of these drainage areas is a typical collection system set up, where you have local gravity flow, and it all goes to one pump station. From that pump station, Leaving that pump station is one force main, which is just a pressurized wastewater pipe. What's interesting about this flow, this, this infrastructure is the end of it. Most force mains stay, in, stay independent and individual, and they tie into a single discharge manhole. In this situation, all three of these pump stations, their force mains all tie into one pipe, one 10 inch pipe, which, which is what's highlighted here. This highlighted force main is about 9,000 feet of pipe that, that, that discharges to the Delancey Road, eventually makes its way into your Route 40 intercept. Mm -hmm. So the what makes the hydraulics complicated and what, what represents your overall bottleneck when you look at adding these flows to, to your source system is that shared 10 inch force main. Back in 2013, we did a project where we upgraded each one of the three individual pump stations with a combination of new pumps, new motors, and VFDs. VFDs are variable frequency drives. They allow you to run the pump station at, at, diff at different flows based off need. Part of that project included upgrading the shared force main. It's 10 inch, upgrading it to a 14 inch force main. The pump station upgrades happened. The force main upgrades did not happen. 
Um, there were issues with the easements that we needed. We, 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 need, we need permission to run this force main along, along the property, primarily the, uh, the Pico right away. So the pump stations were upgraded. Now, now the, the capacity back then in 2013, um, we didn't need to upgrade the force main at the time. So for the past five years, it's been running. It's been running okay. What we're here to talk to you about is what's going to happen when all these new flows come, in, come online. Mm -hmm. So with, with that said, um, I'm going to, one more thing before I pass it off to Lee's, the, the other visual is that for each drainage area, the hashed area, the dashed in lines, those represent the most significant new projects to each drainage area. So you have, you have the Ayers property proposing to tie in the Warner Road drainage area. You have Tenby Ridge proposing a tie in at Meadows drainage area. And you have Liberty Hill and Patriots Landing proposing a tie in to the Patriots Glen drainage area. Now those are, I'm just highlighting the major ones. If you look at Appendix B, there's a whole page of growth. There's a whole page worth the proposed flows. We just wanted to, to highlight the main ones over here. Mm -hmm. So before I, 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 I end this with the, with the uh, summary and, and the cost, <coughs> I'm going to pass it off to Luigi to talk about our, our analysis and, and the recommendations. Thank you, Brian. That was uh, very good. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to briefly describe the sewer capacity analysis uh, we did for the for this not, uh, nor, uh, northeastern region. I'm going to defer on the director a little bit. So the appendix A, that one does not show the enforcement, the shared enforcement, so which is from uh, from like uh, north of the railroad all the way down, uh, so the Pico right right away, and then uh, to the south, discharge to a manhole next to the uh, Delancey Road. Okay. Um, so that's next to Chapel Run, right? Yeah. yeah this 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 is uh, Chapel <coughs> Run development. Yeah. So just so they'll know for that. For that. Yeah. Um, so we collected the data for each drainage area. Um, like the system info and uh, the pump station records, and we also put, uh, had the pump drawdown test uh, performed at each pump station with assistance of the info mark and the Depa uh, Department of Public Works. And we gathered all the information, we look at the, um, the flow system, and then we analyze the the system, how the system will handle the existing flow and how much more flow the system we can take, and including the graphic system, the pump station, and the enforcement in this area. Um, so with, with all the analysis, and uh, we, um, we concluded that this, the, uh, the gravity sewer system in each drainage area, they, uh, they have capacity after the existing flow, and we have the recommended tie-in for for those um, substantial developments, and that you can see the recommended tie-in in the appendix B, E, and F. And with that, in the downstream uh, rapid sewer, after after that tie-in, they have the capacity to receive the, the additional flow. And the same, the same for the pump station. The pump station, they have the capacity to handle the existing flow and all, and all the proposed future flows. And they have the uh, separate individual enforcement up to the muddy land where the shared enforcement section starts. All the individual enforcement, they have the capacity. Um, the existing 10-inch shared enforcement Right now, there's no issue with the existing flow, but that's a bottleneck, capacity bottleneck of the entire sewer system. So in the future, with more, more flow coming in from the future development, and uh, um, the flow velocity will, will, like the chances for all the third pump stations, they're currently on the VFD control. And because of the low flow, so the, the chance for all three pump stations um, pumping together, the chances are low. Um, but with more flow coming in, the chances for all three pump stations coming together will increase, and that will cause the flow rate in the in the shared force main goes up. And the uh, the higher the velocity in the force main, and the more electric uh, electricity um, it observed at the pump station, it's like it will increase the, the cost of 
it will just increase the significantly. Once the once the um, the velocity reaching the higher higher point, and uh, um, so we recommend monitor the flow condition at each pump station. And right now the pumping rate can be observed at the pump station instantaneously, but there's no way to uh, record that data on a continuously basis for further analysis. So one of our recommendation is to install the data logger at each pump station, um, and uh, that will allow the all the flow data be recorded, and that can be extracted later for further analysis on a regular basis, along with all the all the developments that started to uh, to happen. <coughs> um, and that, but for the long long term, we still recommend the the, the uh, ten inch forcement be upgraded to forty inch, which will. Um, enable the all the circum stations to realize the full capacity. And right now they're they're kind of operating under capacity. All right, at this point I'm going to pass to Ryan. Thanks, Lisa. So uh, I'm gonna touch on the cost estimate. Which and, page do we turn to here? Uh, page the last page or was there number six. Number six. Number six. So I'm going to talk to you about our technical results and our, our technical Summary, but then I want to I want to bring up a couple couple bullet points that I think are important moving forward based on our recommendation. So as Luigi mentioned, our short term recommendation is to install data logger at each of these stations. They each run two, around two thousand dollars. Now what that's going to do is that's going to give us the information we need to use the VFDs to their maximum potential. We are basically realize the most capacity we can. Out of the out of the bottleneck, which is this 10-inch force beam, be, before we have to upgrade, because the cost for the force beam upgrade is 1.2 million, and I and we also know based from five years ago, we had some challenges with getting the easements that we needed at, at, at a reasonable price for an, for installing this upgraded force beam. So that that's a substantial project, and so we want to we want to give you the most um, the, the best solution long term. And our solution is you don't you don't need that force main upgraded tomorrow, but it, with the but with all the growth we do expect, eventually we are going to need that upgraded force main. And so with these data loggers, what we can do we can either team up with with the planning department, or we can team up on on the on the operations side with Infomarket, and we can set this up so that there's going to be a there's going to be a certain number. A certain amount of new flow that hits the entirety of, of these three drainage areas that's going to trigger the need where let's say three to five years from from that time with predicted growth trends that force main that upgraded force main is going to need to be in the ground and, and and then we can make sure that the force main is, is upgraded um, with, with plenty of time be, be, before it's actually needed now that 1.2 million I, I want to touch on that for a second because from a, from a town budgeting standpoint, you have a lot of growth that's dictating the need for this upgrade force meeting. And so every town looks at their impact fees a little bit differently. What does the impact fee cover and what does the impact fee not cover? So just to give you some math, if we're looking at the 1.2 million for the force main upgrade project, when you, when, you sum, when you sum up the entirety of all the proposed future EDUs, um, which is just equivalent dwelling units, basically the amount of flow that a normal house would, would, would generate. You get 1,100 potential EDUs, which could all contribute to this. So if you do the math, and, and if you're going to look at it from a cost sharing standpoint, each EDU um, would, would be responsible <laughs> for around $1,090 worth of those 1.2 million force meeting upgrades. So I just wanted to give you a feel for what, what, what we're looking at. So one of the one of the conversations we can have moving ahead is, all right, where's that thousand dollars going to come from? And is that where, where how how we're going to make that work in, in the budget? What type of cost sharing are, are we going to look into? So that's that's an important number to to know moving forward. Um, and just and I guess just to wrap everything up. Leishi and I looked at the entirety of this drainage area. We looked at the upstream gravity sore, we looked at the, the, the individual pump stations, we looked at the, the pump station wet wells, we looked at the individual force means until it gets to this shared force mean. And, and the, 
the the only bottleneck we, we really saw is this shared force main. So in order to take the entirety of the future growth, we are looking at eventually up upgrading this pump this force main from a 10 inch to a, to a 14 inch. So that's that's basically the presentation, but I definitely want to open it up to questions and answers because we we covered we covered a lot in, in a little bit of enough time, but I didn't want to be too worried up front. So. Well, uh, quite frankly, I think you explained it very well. And, Thanks. and uh, uh, you brought it to our level anyhow, I can tell you that, or at least to my level. And and uh, so just to, to clarify, <coughs> if we can move forward with the uh, local data loggers first, which we're looking at uh, collectively about a $6,000 six yes, yes, per pump. Yes, and looking down the road, because I know that we have we have, I know, looking at, uh, I'll go up, up the top, I know Tenby Ridge is, uh, of course, I'm gonna, I know they're on and off, uh, but I know the Ayers property is pretty hot right now. I know Liberty Hill and Liberty, the other Liberty one, yeah. the Patriots, uh, Patriots uh, they're pretty much dead okay. uh, as we speak. Even though I'm saying that, I did, we haven't seen the, the change, but I understand that Liberty Hill uh, just came out of receivership and there's a new owner uh, so maybe that'll be coming back to us with those approved lots i don't know uh, so i know so it sounds pretty good so if we get those items in there that the ultimate is to turn it into uh, upgrades to put the 14 inch uh, sewer line and right and it becomes a, it becomes a matter of time because we, so the numbers that we use to analyze future flows are dictated at the state level. And they have us use 250 gallons a day per EDU with a peaking factor of four. Well, the one thing I've learned over the past 20 years is that that number, you want to always go off real data if you can, because that number can be conservative in nature, but if you have large storm events, if you have INI &I inflow and infiltration, mm -hmm. that number cannot cover it all. So with these data loggers, we're going to know the real number as, as the months go by. And we'll have, we'll have a much better better tool to, to, as a predictor tool to find out when this force may should be upgraded. Very good. Does anyone from the board have any questions or comments? This is not a public hearing, but I know that there's some interested parties here about this. Is there any, I would limit you to maybe one or two questions with our engineering. Mr. Gary Bolas. Yes. Hi, Gary Bolas. Um, just a question, how many of you can you take currently through that before you have to upgrade the system of the force main? I'm sorry? How many EDUs can you currently put through there without upgrading the force main? Do you know? Do have that number in here? Um, it really depends on like the real flow going into the pump station. And it, it could be, it could vary. Let me know. Um, That's why it kind of we, we recommend that we have the data locker. Yeah, I mean, what I could do, um, and it will be subsequent to this because I would need to run some numbers, but what I could do is I could provide you the total number of proposed theoretical EDUs that would ultimately trigger the, the force main be in over capacity. Um, but I would just want to make sure that, to make it clear that that's, that's a very generalized number because the truth is it, it, matter, it ma matters on where those EDUs are and which pump station they're going to. Because these pump stations are different sizes. Well, some of these pumps, one of the pump stations is twice as strong as the other. Mm -hmm. so, so when that one's running more, that when that one's on, those smaller pumps don't, have, don't get much flow in there at all. Right. So it would depend on where these flows are coming in. But I had mentioned the 1100 number. I could give you maybe a range and say, we're looking at between 500 and 600 new EDUs is when we would speculate okay. this force main would be over capacity. But I would just want to be very careful on behalf of the town to make sure it's a, it's a, it's a speculation. Mm -hmm. As so much of it, like Lisa said, it really depends on these real flows and how these real flows are coming in. Part of that 250 gallons a day that the state has us use, they actually, that, the reason why they peak it by four and the reason why that number is big to begin with is because that number is supposed to include I and I which has nothing to do with what's built. It has to do with rain events and, and, and the pipe being watertight. So it's, it's, it's not quite that simple, you know what I mean? I, 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 
I, and that's why I like the idea of going off these data loggers. We can get a real trend to where these numbers go. Well, I think that was good information. Is Elmer, how many units do you have proposed at your area, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 400. 400. So we're looking at, if, if, if that was to be built out with the other 200, 600, then we're probably, at that point, we're ready to put that main in. we we got to start planning for that main now. Right. Very good. Is there any other questions or comments? One question. The shaded area to the left, far left, What is that? what is that area? That area? That is... Um, that is out of town limit currently, and uh, um, that we don't have specific development information on those areas, but those are close to the, the current drainage uh, current drainage area and considered to be the future potential expansion for this drainage area. Right, right. So those areas are not yet famous, but they're part of the right. town's overall like a, group. That's right? like a future expansion for the for the uh, meadows at Owl Creek. And that's a future expansion for the uh, Warner Road. And those are the future expansion for the Patriots plan. And I think there was one more question back here. Yeah, I got a question. Those three pump stations that you got, it goes into one drainage, correct? One force main. Okay. Yeah, it now, goes. how old is that drainage? Uh, the force main? Yeah, well, that one drainage you said that goes all the way to the Yeah, that yeah. goes to the, um, it eventually kind of goes down and then ties into the okay. uh, Route yeah. 40 interceptor okay. and okay. that directly goes to the wastewater treatment. Well, how old is Was that? That's pretty new. Yeah, it's. Warner Road. Um, what the, <laughs> the first one? I uh, know that pumps, it, it, it's the force main. Yeah. Warner Road, force main. So what was that? I would, I would think it was the 80s. Yeah, I, I, I think it's I want to say 80s. mid 80s. Yeah. Mid 80s. Yeah. So we put new pumps in and new water force into an old piping system. Yes, that happens all the time. And does that make sense? Yeah, uh, it sometimes does. I mean, it, it, how's that? I'm sorry. How's that? The materials back then is not the same as it is today. Well, pipe materials are, are interesting. Um, one of the actually the biggest debates with asset management programs are not just to use the date of the pipe to dictate what kind of shape it's in and to dictate when it needs to be replaced. Um, I've, I've seen 80-year-old pipe function better than 15-year-old pipe. And, and so the, the issue with this pipe actually isn't the condition. It's not the age. The issue is it's a hydraulic bottleneck because it's only, it's only 10 inches in diameter taking flows from, from three pump stations. Okay, but that pipe back then was built for a certain amount of pressure, correct? Certain amount of flow. That's okay, certain yeah. amount of flow. Flow is also pressure too. Now you're gonna put more pressure to this pipe. Because that pipe will hold up to that pressure. And yes. if so, how yeah. do you know? It, it will. So this so this pipe, this, this pipe is rated for around 250 PSI. Mm -hmm. And and when you have three pump stations running, it's actually not a lot more uh, flow than with only one pressure, one, one pump station running. And, and so we're talking about going from I don't think we have PSI values in there, but we're probably talking about going from 30 PSI to 50 PSI mm -hmm. on a pipe that's rated for 250 PSI. So your, your safety factor is plenty. The, the issue is, is, is the, the capacity of the pipe. The, the issue is the size of the pipe, well, um, not, not the condition. Well, they, just to clarify that, I've been an administrator for almost 28 years. We had one breach of that pipe so far, and it was an air release valve. I never the pipe was an air release valve that was prepared. So it's held up at least since I've been here. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, this was introduced on the 6th and is subject to adoption tonight. 
The amendments include uh, wording changes for clarity, restricting penalty during peddling during special events, increasing permit fees, and establishing specific fines opposed to referencing the penalties set forth in the charter as recommended by council. So I would recommend that the board uh, accept ordinance 9 2018 for adoption tonight it'll be effective in 20 days do we have a motion to accept ordinance 9-2018 as presented for adoption so moved. we have a motion and a second any discussion i think the discussion that we had at the last meeting uh, council actually uh, it was lisa was here and she answered our questions um, after the meeting and it was already uh, in the in the ordinance so uh, we have a motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. That's all I had. Very good. Well, the first thing I have, uh, just a scheduling, uh, with the 4th of July uh, being uh, our first Wednesday meeting, uh, I, I just wanted to let the board know that we will not have a meeting on the 4th of July. So our next meeting will be on July 11th. So we'll have back-to-back -back town meetings. We'll have one on July 11th, and then we'll have one on uh, July 18th, and uh, we will not have a workshop again in the month of July. So that was that item. Alrighty, uh, we, uh, the town board, attended uh, the Maryland Municipal League Conference last week in Ocean City, and uh, we got to spend two days of going to classes and, and uh, two days of uh, finding out what's new out there for municipalities and and there's quite a few uh, things that uh, uh, the board and myself uh, took a look at when we were going through the exhibits uh, first and foremost I wanted to thank uh, the Elton Chamber and Alliance for being there supporting the town of Elton and uh, making people aware of what we're doing in the town of Elton. I thought it was uh, wonderful uh, for them to be part of the Main Street. Uh, I think there's how many towns, maybe <coughs> three towns now participating on, on, municipal Main, yeah. on Municipal Main, which is great. It's really great to see that many uh, towns in the uh, state of Maryland participate. Uh, our speaker, uh, which uh, Blue George took a fantastic picture of, was Shannon Hoffman Polson. She was the first woman Apache helicopter pilot. Mm -hmm. So it was a great photo that you took for us. And I'll have to tell you, she was a, uh, she wouldn't take no for an answer. I mean, the message that she gave was uh, when they told her no, she kept going. She kept going at it. And uh, it was uh, pretty inspiring, her message. So uh, a couple of things that I brought back with me. Uh, uh, I think at the last meeting, I ta uh, we talked to the board a little bit about our water meters and the direction that we're going with uh, uh, our public works department. And I have to say, uh, I was a little on the skeptical side of uh, moving forward with the census meters, but I have to tell you, they had a live demo at the exhibit on exactly how these meters are working. They had a a unit there, they had the water there, they showed how it shut off, how they had to, uh, they could turn it to where it's a, 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 a low flow, a high flow, and how it was done instantly. And I think that we all agree, that's what we wanted here. And I think moving forward with these water meters was absolutely the right move. And uh, uh, I have to say, uh, Dan and your crew, I know you persevered through uh, some uh, quite a few of the things that we did, but I, I thought uh, the final product, you know, the proof is going to be in the pudding uh, 18 months from now, but I think that uh, we, we did the right thing. I think we, we moved in the right direction there. We also, uh, uh, the other thing that came to mind was uh, they had, for areas, and I, and I thought about this, they had solar panel trash compactors was the new thing that they were showing this year and and you think well where why would you want a solar panel trash compactor well it, it was about the size of a uh, old style mailbox solar panel on top but it would hold about eight to ten times the amount of trash 
of a normal 55 gallon drum and it would keep compacting it, compacting it. Well, my knee jerk reaction was maybe we should take a look at this for areas on Main Street when we have the apartments come down and they put their trash out on the street, maybe there's a way that they could take it and put it right into that trash compactor and then you wouldn't have uh, the debris on the streets and then when our, our waste management would come through, uh, they could actually check by their cell phone and it tells you whether it needs to be picked up yet or not. But it's also something that maybe we might want to take a look at areas like Turnquist, uh, Delancey Village, uh, areas where we have townhouses where they don't have the ability to put the bigger trash cans. Maybe the trash compactors we get aren't the trash compactors that are this big. Maybe they have to be a little bit bigger, but maybe it could uh, compact the waste. But Dave, could you take a look at that maybe and uh, see if they make sense? I think, I think Newark, Delaware has some. Mm -hmm. On a smaller scale, but well, let's see how it works out. You know, maybe we can take a look at that. Uh, might make sense for us. It may not. I, uh, but I think it's uh, worth taking a look at. The uh, other thing that came up when we were at MML, I, I actually uh, uh, the chief was down there with us, and we walked him through, and I grabbed him by the hand, and and uh, we we were talking about uh, parking meters again. Our our best. The subject that we love to talk about the most is parking meters. And uh, once again, uh, we went and took a look at the uh, kiosk systems. And uh, we just, I wanted to understand how a kiosk could possibly work for us instead of meters. But during our discussions with the chief, and I know he left to go on vacation, uh, he was telling me that the meters, our meters that we have, we're currently, when we buy parts for our meters, they're so old that we have to buy them through an antique restoration house. <laughs> so our meters that still take a quarter for one hour are literally antiques. Uh, so buying glassware, buying the internal parts of them, uh, buying all that, he said the price is uh, pretty high buying it through an antique dealer rather than someone that had the parts. So as we were discussing this, I'd like for the board to think about this, maybe it's time to eliminate all the meters. We have a very good code enforcement person and, and our, our young lady that goes around and makes sure that everyone is only out there for three hours parking. Maybe it's time to uh, change it. Yeah, uh, well, Earl's gonna use an example. How It cost him $2 per hour when he went over into Ocean City uh, and, and had to use his debit card. But I guess the direction uh, uh, that I maybe maybe we want to consider is, is I think she's doing, I think Claire is doing a great job of making sure people aren't there for over three hours. So if we eliminate it to 37 meters in town and made it all three hour parking and she just goes around and, and if they're over three hours, she'll write, write the enforcement ticket. If we find it being a problem, then I would suggest let's move into the kiosk. It would be that direction to go. Because I think meters are kind of a thing of a past, and I think we've got a lot of old meters. But I just wanted to put that in your ears. I'm not asking for any uh, uh, votes on that tonight, but just give it some thought, and uh, I'm sure Katie's going to put that in the paper for us so we'll get some <laughs> feedback from our residents and see what they feel about that. It's, uh quarter for each seven and a half minutes at Bethany. You okay. have a machine, you put it in, then you get a ticket, put it on your car. Yeah. I think that's what it is. You that's know what it is actually. The, the, of course the guy was trying to sell me on the kiosk. He said, well in the kiosk you put your debit card in your credit card or you book money. It uh, you put your license plate number, your tag number, and uh, once you leave you're gone. And uh, if you looked at it from a revenue standpoint, by going to a kiosk you're going to increase your revenues by over 30% because you're not stealing someone else's quarter. You're not pulling in and getting someone else's quarter. So they, that's kind of a national average that they were trying to sell us on. But I'm looking at it a little bit differently. Maybe it's time to get rid of the meters and if we have a problem, then we come back with the kiosks. Uh, and the kiosks, we have to get multiple kiosks. We could just post the streets three hour limits. Yep and not have the meters and then she can she can check them that's i think she can check them but you guys give that some thought
Yeah, he did mention that. Yeah, we painted all those meters, and that makes it a little tougher to put the coin in. Well, we now. could sell them as antiques. We yeah. could sell them as antiques. I think that there's a part. I, I think that we could get something out of it. Uh, so that was that. Uh, the other thing I had uh, uh, upstairs at the Elton Chamber building uh, a couple weeks ago, I went into the upstairs. Uh, for years, the town of Elton had leased to the Special Olympics the upstairs meeting room and I think for a dollar a year is, is above the old uh, offices. Um, I went up there the other day and I don't think anyone's been in there since 2005 was the, the latest information. So I think it, I guess what I'm getting at, I think we have some space there that's available <coughs> to us that we might want to look at uh, of something we could do. I have to tell you, it's a, a rather large, I mean the space is as large as this room two restrooms in it needs a little bit of work I mean there's little cut walls but maybe it's something we could uh, uh, lease to a startup business uh, uh, maybe it could be part of a renovation of the whole building uh, but I think uh, Lou if you could take a look at it and there's a lot of there's a lot of items up there uh, that we it would be great if we could get to the Special Olympics or, or to whoever would, would, would take that but I don't think, it, I truly believe that no one's been in there since 2005. May have been earlier. You think it's? No, I think later than 2005, it? but I'm not certain when. It's been a while. Been a while. Been a while. And uh, I know I got, I only got two more things, guys. The, uh, we did a fantastic job at the post office last year removing uh, the, the, the bushes in the front the mature bushes I think the uh, residents of the town of Elton feel so much safer when they go up to that they're not worrying about someone lurking out of the out of the bush per se to uh, uh, get them uh, which I thought was over uh, overstated but uh, to the right to the right of the post office there's a long hedge I'm not sure if that uh, hedge belongs to the post office or uh, the, the neighbor to the right of that. I would almost have to tend to believe it's probably the post office. But if we could, it, I think it could be, all those hedges could be knocked out literally in, in uh, 10 minutes. But Dan, see if you can get permission to do it. Is the board okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have to probably make sure, I, I'm pretty sure the adjoining property owner. Yes, he, I did request it that, um, that we were starting to move it the last time. When we, he said uh, they're coming over onto his, his property, property and they're coming onto this property, hitting cars when you go through there now. So take a look at that. And I, I guess the last thing that I, I have, uh, uh, I'm very uh, pleased when I look at our financial report and we see that uh, our interest that we're earning is far greater than what the interest that we were earning in the past. And as part of that, of course, the interest rates have gone up. Uh, but for the amount of money that the town of Elton has had in those accounts, we're not really earning interest over the year. It was uh, disheartening. Uh, we currently, uh, in the town of Elton, we were doing business with the PNC Bank, and, and now we have uh, the Columbia Bank on board as a uh, another uh, part of our town um, I would like I would like to ask the board once again to think about this I think uh, and I know it could create a little bit more effort on the part of uh, finance but maybe we could put a, a some deposits in the other three banks that serve uh, the town of Elton so when I say that then that way there's a little bit of money uh, that the town of Elton has in all the banks that support the town of Elton and we'll show that we're supporting them too. Um, give it some thought once again, but I think it might be uh, a good step <coughs> for us to do. So, not we don't have to put much, but maybe at least get something to show that we're there to support them. That's all I have tonight. Gene, you're on. You did, you did so good, I'm gonna pass. Charles? I'm gonna pass too, but Certainly, we can. I, I believe vote on the last thing you mentioned about giving up money to all the banks to be very supportive of, of the town of Elton. I think it's a good move. Yeah. Thank you. 
I did. I saw your notes. Yeah, you know, I, I saw your notes, and I, I was trying to get <laughs> everyone. Else. So, um, but just to touch base on the kiosk part. I I think we would really be um, moving high tech if we go that route. I would love to go that route. They got a chance to use the park space. Nobody complained about how much I I wanted to park. No time limit, whatever. We were eating ice cream, saying, "Oh, we only got two hours." Made it back in time. I just went home, moved out, and somebody was waiting to take my spot. <laughs> so they were still making money. That's so anyway, that was good. Um, the hitches part, you already covered that. I would like to suggest that someone suggested me the parking downtown. Um, when the little parking spaces were, you know how it's hard for you to see where the line is when you're backing up parking. Someone made a, a, a good comment that if we could put a little white hash on the left side where you're pulling in, it would show where the parking space is starting in. It would be easier for you to be able to park there on Main Street. So maybe look at that thing, another thing to the Christmas list. Uh, no, curve, yeah, on the sidewalk, on the opposite side where you're driving. And I thought that was a great idea. And that's it. Thank you, Earl. Yeah. Mary Jo? Um, you did take care of everything for <laughs> <No. laughs> But I do want to mention the 4th of July is coming up. And we do not have a sign out at our fence this year. It happens every year, we have to mention it. But can we please get the sign up so people know we are having the uh, 4th of July event? And that's all I have. Well, I'd like to touch on the 4th of July real quick. Uh, uh, last year, uh, we were getting uh, some, some uh, uh, social media messages from residents when we had, uh, I'm going to say, buffered off the front area of, of the grass where people used to sit in the front to watch the ground fireworks. Just to be clear, there is no more ground fireworks, or are there ground fireworks? It was the, the, it was the, the amount. reach of the uh, fireworks. Barry Marshall made this yeah. move back. Yeah, Very, good. Been on the the public danger. Yeah. Very good. I think that what we just need to make sure that we do this year is when we post it on our web page and uh, through communications, it's for, it's a fire marshal, and that's what I stressed also. Very good. Well, this is the time of the meeting. We open up the floor for the public to say whatever they'd like to say, and I know that Premier Otto has something to say tonight, so come on down. <laughs> I know Mr. Brandon Hollenball has something good to tell us. <laughs> well, thank you very much for letting me speak. And fourth and foremost, I want to thank you guys for approving the Grand Prix again, which is going to, if you don't know, um, we are doing the third annual Grand Prix here in downtown Oakton on October 6th. Um, we're making lots of changes for the better. Um, getting a lot of feedback. Social media is working wonderful for us to get more spectators. We're expecting a good crowd this year. We had a great crowd last year. I'm really expecting a lot more people this year. So we're wanting to make some changes for the better. Um, but what I wanted to bring uh, to the board's attention tonight to consider um, is we've been, I've been watching traffic on Howard Street. So I've been doing some, my own kind of research on Howard Street, looking at the speed bumps by the ball diamond, um, seeing if there's some way because my challenge with the Grand Prix is we love the course, we love where we're at, we love the space that we let us do it on. We absolutely love it. Um, we made some changes to make it safer, um, and we have some bigger ideas to make it safer this year. It's going to be really safe and really fun. But I was kind of thinking if maybe we could look at some different options of what we could do to make the speed bumps safer. Because right now we had 16 carts last year. We're probably picking up right now tentatively around another four. So we should have 20 participants. Maybe more as it goes on, so we're a little bit ahead of the curve this year. Um, but our capacity is 30 to, to make it run better. Uh, we made some time changes, so we're starting a race an hour early. Um, I got my schedule, which I'll get a copy of the schedule to you guys so you know what it is ahead of time, so we can be out of there uh, quickly, you know, in and out, uh, by hopefully by 4.30, uh, instead of later than we have in the past. Um, but my concerns when I'm recruiting businesses to get involved um, is they're really concerned about the speed bumps. Also, the participants that we have now, are, are, we're having problems with um, cars braking, and it's more because of the jarring of the speed bumps, because the carts don't have suspension on them. So 
so it's just straight frame, solid axle. Um, and we've made them, we've made some upgrades to make them better, but I think I could really hit uh, my goal 30 carts, which is our capacity, if I had um, some more help with the speed bump. So what I kind of looked into was different options. I have three options for you I want to briefly go through. I'm going to start from highest to lowest because the one I think makes more sense for public safety and what I'm concerned about is the actually lowest cost option. But I don't know if it would make sense to everyone here. So, um, so I had them backwards. So option three, which will now be option one, was to replace speed bumps, patch and pave, and then put more prominent crosswalks in and have digital speed on their sign so it lets them know what their speed is. Because after watching the traffic there, I don't know that people are really realizing what the speed limit is there sometimes. I think that could be a challenge sometimes. Um, so, but I'll be honest, I don't think that's the option that we should go. I do believe that we should have speed bumps. I personally believe it after watching, I think we should have them, but I think we can do it in a better way. Um, so my second option would be to remove the current speed bumps and put um, removable speed bumps in. That, so in the winter for the race, we could take one side out. We wouldn't even have to remove both sides. So I would take one side out so it would be across. So then we could just make an S turn and come through smooth. So we'd only have to remove one side of the other and stagger it. And then in the winter time, we could also remove them so we could plow the snow for the streets and make it easier to do, do snow removal and things like that. Um, that cost, um, we're looking at about $6,600 to do that. Um, that's with really nice speed bumps. They're black. They get staked in, they have the yellow stripes on this cautionary. And to be honest, I went over to Rise and Sun Park has them. So they currently added them because they had no, nothing in there. So me and my wife went over and drove over them. And then we drove over our speed bumps currently. And it's definitely going to, that option definitely would slow the people down more because it's more pronounced. Where ours are, are nice and wide, but it's almost kind of gradual for a car, even though it's hard for the car for racing. Mm -hmm. But they can almost speed anyway. Because we were watching people going through the speed bumps at the um, ball dock. Um, but my easiest and cheapest option was to go in. We have two current speed bumps that go completely across the road of Howard Street. When you come down Howard Street, we have a stop sign at Bow Street and Howard. From there to the next speed bump, what I would like to do is if we were going toward the ball diamond, is remove this side, the left side of the speed bump altogether. So we still have a speed bump on traffic going toward the, ball, uh, the main ball dime. Then go forward and remove the other side and leave the other speed bump that's currently there. So we'd have two speed bumps, we just wouldn't have, we'd have one on each side instead of a two on each side right now. Then make our stripes more pronounced for our crosswalks, patch and pave the other side. We can run through there smoothly for the go-karts and we still have speed bumps. Um, and of course we have a stop sign at Berkeley and there. So when I was driving with my car, each time I would come down, that was the, that made the most sense to remove them because I would have to hit the brakes there anyway versus the other way, the way it uh, stretched out, it made sense to have those two there just for speed that I was able to get in my car to get there. Um, so if we did that option, um, we could put remove the speed bumps and patch that and we'd be all in at $4,200. Um, I talked to Mike at Dick's Hollow, which has done some work for the town in the past, and then that was the gentleman that gave me a quote of $4,200. Mm -hmm. He said he would probably need about a half a day to do that, and he could just shut one side down at a time. Um, but that would be our cheapest option. So originally when we did the Grand Prix three years ago, we got quotes and they were really talking about $15,000 to take out and put back in, which obviously is not feasible to do the race because we're trying to raise charity, charity money. But I think that may be an option, or the uh, removable speed bumps. Because once I've done some of my research, I really believe there should be speed bumps of some kind. Mm -hmm. So we had talked before, maybe initially saying, can we get the speed bumps out? I personally don't think we want to do that. I think we want to have some kind of speed bump there. But I think we could maybe, if you guys were open to it or think about it, and we could talk about it at a different time, um, of having an option to either put removable ones in, or cut in half out, or even if we cut half out and put removals in mm -hmm. on the other side, left side on the other side. So that was just my thoughts. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, if anyone has any questions yeah. about it. So, so on your track, you would do an S. Mm -hmm. Which we want to do an S anyway. But to do an S with the speed bump there, it actually jars the car more. So if we had it out, we can make it more gradual S, which is going to slow the race down a little bit more and make it safer. 
But if we do the, if we did a S turn with the speed bump, the way the car comes across, it's going to jar the car more and can make them spin out. So I really didn't want to do it with the speed bump there. And now when you're hitting the speed bump now, it's really, we did some footage and watching it. It is damaging cars. I mean, I've been fixing them, but it's, it's definitely hindering them and where we're going to have to replace the car sooner. Mm -hmm. um, things like that where welds are and things like that. Lou, can you give us some, take a look at that? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brandon. Well, Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And I do want to say that there's $50 <coughs> chances for a car. I have not with me. <laughs> anybody want to? Yeah, just quickly, um, yeah. Mayor, if you didn't know, we are to try to help the, the charity as long and expand to our um, goal of 30 carts. I purchased a cart, and we have it all together. It's at my shop on display. We're going to have it next Thursday at the car show on display because we're sponsoring a car show downtown. And we're selling tickets. We sold 20 tickets today. We just got tickets this morning. We're only doing 100 chances at $50 a chance. That includes complete race cart, race ready, prepped, um, all the support from Premier for the first year. And we're also paying our entry fees for the first year. Well, I'm certainly going to buy a ticket. Thank you. You're going to drive. I'll lose a little weight. <laughs> <laughs> we will provide the driver if necessary. <coughs> Does anyone else have anything to say this evening? Yes, sir. Uh, state your name again and your address for me here. I'm Vinny Guadiano. Vinny. How you doing? Doing great. <laughs> How, you doing? How you doing? I live in South Park, right? Now, I got the notice in the mail for that uh, water meter, the new upgrade. Yes. Now, I have some questions on that. I know people probably will laugh or something like that. You're on, say, you're on South Carton? Yeah. So you sent those out to South Carton? Okay. It, it, it's the whole um, um, Thompson State area. Okay. Right? Okay. Now, my question is, just like with the electric company with the, uh, the new meters there, we opted out. Now, um, like people would, I was talking with some neighbors there, and people with heart conditions and with electrical on their hearts, um, how do we know that that system, it's radio waves. And the, the reason why I'm, I'm like that, because I was in aviation 24 years, so I know all the time. But uh, a lot of people fear that it'll affect them. Is there a, a thing there like the electric company that you can opt not to take the meter? There won't be any opt out, but we'll provide to you data that it will not affect I, I'm pretty sure there was something we talked about that, wasn't it, Ryan? Yeah, this this, this came up um, because this 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 is a very legitimate concern that you have, and and, and to the mayor's point, um, I would I would rely on the manufacturers of flow meter to provide you and, and all your residents with, with all the backup data that, that they need to, to establish the company. Well, how would we get that data? We'll get that data posted. Lou, is that we can get that posted? Put it on our website. Okay. It'll be placed on the website. Now, I I, I want to tell you, I, if there was a, a legitimate legitimate health concern, and 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 I know that that would throw a wrinkle into the the, the whole system, uh, but we would uh, we currently right now we're still doing the touch pads, right? And that if you have a touch pad, the only difference is it won't be a touch pad. There will be a battery behind it which reads the numbers out. That's Essentially, that's what it is. If you have an eye call already, right? okay. And that's well, that we'll get it posted yeah. for you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? Seeing none, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.